So one of, the, one of the objectives here, one of the things I want to share with you is that Photoshop can be a very vexing, overwhelming, confusing program if you don't start thinking the way it thinks. The difference between a path, the difference between a channel, the difference between a layer. Again, the layer holds the physical image. And very important step here, you have to be in that what's called target layer in order to affect the image that's part of that layer. And it's a very simple mistake to make. So let's say I was doing something and I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. I was in the beach layer. But I decided that I want to do some color correcting or I want to basically do some brush work with her layer. So I'd start doing this and I start getting frustrated because nothing's happening and I'm wondering why I can't affect. Did I maybe I'm gonna restart the computer? Maybe I'm gonna contact Robert at you to make video. Maybe I'm gonna call Photoshop. Maybe I'm gonna I'm call Adobe, but something's not happening here. Maybe I need to reinstall Photoshop. Something is very strange. I know I'm in the Beaver Brush tool. It's at normal 100% opacity. It's set to purple, but for some reason it's not working here. And why is it not working? Why can't I paint with purple? Well, the answer is very simple. You have been painting with purple, but you paint with purple on the beach layer because you selected the beach layer. So if you hide this layer by default, you'll see the nightmare that you just created. Okay, now I can get out of this two ways. I can Command Z to undo a few times. Command Option Z, Command Option Z, Command Option Z, Command Option Z. Or I could, if I was smart about this, make a change, save a change, I could revert to the last save version. So again, it's a very simple mistake to make, but make sure you're in the correct targeted layer. So to avoid problems from happening, simply make sure in the Move tool, letter V, Move, right there and then command click now I know I'm positively inside our layer in fact if you want to check for that for sure it's over here the advantage of that technique guys is you can be in different places here I could be in my path I could be in my channel but still command click the selection command click now I'm on the palm trees how do I know that because it's right here command click now I'm on her image how do I know that because it's right here so if you're in the move tool, command click is going to save you a lot of headaches. All right, so let's get back into quick mask. So quick mask does not increase your file size because it's saved on the fly. So I have to have something selected first. Now we have something selected, which is lying inside of channel six. So I can load channel six. Again, simple mistake to make. Make sure you're in the correct target layer. We did that by command clicking with the move tool selected, control clicking for windows. Then command option six, control alt six windows. Now it's selected. Now again, how can I tell if she's selected or the background selected? Well, if you're not sure about that, hit the delete key and you'll see what's selected. See all the trick in the book. Now again, I wanna hide the selection command H. So quick mask is simply the letter Q, Q for quick mask. Now. Very important step, especially for guys that are new to this and gals. Do not hit Command Q. Command Q is going to quit. Every tool here does not require a Command key or a Control key. It's simply a single letter tool. M for Marquee. C for Crop. I for Eyedropper. So Q for Quick Mask. That can also be found right here. Okay. If I hit Q, I have something selected. So three things are going to happen here. Okay, first thing, notice I'm going to queue for quick mask again. It's going to take whatever my colors are here, which in this particular case is purple and orange, and turn it into foreground, background, black and white. That's step one. The second that's going to happen, it's going to put a color mat on top of my image. So I can basically see the difference between what's selected and what's not selected. Now in this particular case, if you were to double click right here, this actually defaults to red by default. This actually defaults to this color here. And by default, I have my mask area. The color is indicating the mask area, not the select area. Again, cue for quick mask. So you want to pick a color that has good contrast good contrast okay now here's an advantage of using quick mask and getting that contrast I can see right here that there was a mistake in my selection that was rather difficult to see here 
So right here, I have this selected right here. I don't want that selected. Now, we could have also seen that when we hit Command-6, we can see that this is selected. That represents these little black dots here. So back in the day, before they had Quick Mask, and that's why I'm going to share with you some very powerful techniques, right back in the day, if you created an alpha channel, we could have gone to our Beat for Brush tool. Okay, right now I'm in my alpha channel. Okay, Command-6, channel 6, because that's the channel we saved. Okay, and if I'm painting with white, and again, every time you select a tool here, I can't overemphasize enough how important this is. Whenever you select a tool, these are the tool's settings. Every tool has different settings. If you're not sure that you want to use that tool with that setting, check your settings first. As an example, I make a lasso right now. It's going to be 300 pixels. Maybe I want to change that to 0 pixels. So whatever tool you select, these are the choices for that tool. So again, I want to get you very, very good at Photoshop. So if something's not behaving correctly, one of two things have, has happened. Somebody has changed the settings for that particular tool, the settings for that particular layer, or third, the settings for the preference files itself, which we'll talk about in another video. So we can correct if we didn't have quick mask usage or know how to if we didn't have quick mask back in early days of photoshop there was no quick mask so again i'm in my channel six i'm going to pick a larger brush and i'm going to pick a hard edge brush and if you're not sure about that you can go to window brushes and you can pick a hard edge brush here's a hard edge brush that was a fuzzy brush here's a hard edge brush it doesn't have any feathering I just want to share that technique with you. Okay, I'm going to double, I'm just going to close that here. So, because I'm painting with white, I could technically do. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger here, and I could technically do this. Oh, I mean, a stamp tool. My mistake. B for brush, and I'm just going to brush and brush. So, so what happens is that that black, if I paint with black. Black represents a selection. White takes the selection away. So this little exercise right here is going to make you very, very good at Photoshop. So watch what happens right now if I paint with black. X to exchange. If I paint with black, that now becomes a selection. Okay, so how do I know that? Well, if I go back to my composite, which is Command-2, and I load that selection, Command-Option-6, right now I've added to the selection. Right, so if I hit the delete key right now, watch what happens. Okay, it took that away from the selection. So black does that. So again, we can fix this again. Command Option Z, Command D, D select, Command Six goes back to Channel Six, which is right here. Goes back to Physical. Show me that particular channel. So now, if I paint with white again by hitting the X key, or I can hit the Erase tool and erase to white as well. I can erase because remember white erases erase erases the background color. My background color in this particular case is white. My foreground color is black. So again, if you just share with you that technique of black and white. Now, what's between black and white? Well, between black and white, I would have gray. So as an example, if I click right here and I'm going to make this color uh, 55 tab 55 tab 55 any color combinations exact value by default is going to be gray so if you paint with gray okay if I try to paint B for brush and I try to paint with gray this is now going to be what if black gives me the selection and white takes the selection away command 2 channel to, to command 2 composite channel command 2 so watch what happens. Command Option 6. Right? And if I hit the delete key, I'm going to get what here? I'm going to get transparency. Okay? So very important step here. So black basically gives me the whole black hole. White sheet covers up the hole. So I'm either going to add or take away from my selection by painting with black or white. And if I paint with gray, that's going to give me transparency. 
So that's how it works. That's how I get transparent shapes, transparent pixels, because they're gray. In fact, a little secret here, guys, colors are nothing more than shades of gray. There's only one color that exists in the universe, and that's white. Everything else is fragmented white that Sir Isaac Newton discovered back in the 17th, in the 18th century, 1700s. Okay, so if you fragment light by default, you get red, green, blue. Okay, but every color shade is basically a shade of gray. It's a shade of light. So let's get back into this theory of quick mask. So command two is my composite. Command option six is my selection. So again, if I hit Q for quick mask, what happens is that this changes to black and white. I get a ruby lith color on the background and my channel has a quick mask. This is not saved with the file. It's a quick mask. Watch what happens over here. If I Q again, it hides the quick mask. Q again shows the quick mask. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is space bar command. I'm going to zoom right into here. Space bar command. I can zoom in, zoom out with my mouse. Space bar, grab the page, move the page. Okay, I'm going to make my brush a little smaller. So right now, if I paint with white, what is white going to do? White is going to take away from the selection. So if I a Q for quick mask again, it took away from the selection. So now this is selected. Q for quick mask. I'm going to do that. Command Z. Command Option Z. If I paint with white, I'm sorry, if I paint with black, excuse, it's going to add to the mask. So right now, add it to the mask. So if I a Q for quick mask, look what it did. Command Option Z undoes, undoes. So the advantage of quick mask is I can basically make a more pristine selection. So it's very, it's a very fluid brush tool. I can brush away my problems. So as an example, I can zoom into this area right in here, take a small, 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 small brush, and if I paint with black, black can add to the mask because right now. The color is indicating the masked area. This is the select area. This is the protected area. The protected area is now red. So experiment with that in your practice time. But what I want to share with you is that the quick mask is the best, best way to get a very accurate, pristine selection. So I can basically start brushing this away. So right in here is an example. If I command space bars, and I can see that I'm actually nicking part of it arm here. Perhaps you don't want to do that. Okay. Now here's a little technique here. If I hit the X key right now, I'm going to intentionally go outside of the arm here. Intentionally. So I can see where my problem lies here. So I intentionally, I'm going to make a bigger brush here. Right bracket. So I'm going to do this. So what I've done is I physically take it away from the selection. So again, if you hit Q, you'll see that this is now, I expanded the selection. So Q for quick mask enables you to use the brush tool or the erase tool to add or take away from your selection. So it's a very, very powerful technique. White sheet covers selection up. Black hole basically makes the selection. So black paints and adds the selection. So I can basically click here. Now, if you want to do a straight selection, a little trick here, I can hold down the shift key and get an exact perfectly straight line from point A to point B. So I can hold on the shift key and do that and get exactly straight line. I can hit the left bracket key and I can come in here and I can just brush that in right there. Space bar, grab the page, move the page. So the objective here is I'm using my quick mask mode based on the size of my brush, based on the feather of my brush to get a more accurate selection. Little technique here, space bar, grab the page, move the page, and I can move the page with my mouse. So I can start to see my little imperfections with my selection. So here, here's another example. I'm not sure if I have this selected too much or not enough. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And I'm an intention, I'm going to paint with white by hitting the X key. And I'm going to intentionally go outside of the selection. So therefore, I can see my definitive area here. So now when I hit the X key, again, X key exchange between black, white. Look at the bottom left here, black, white. If I paint with black, black adds to the selection. So if I click right there, hold down the shift key, I get a straight line selection. And I just fix that up right there. So I cannot, I cannot basically um, 
overemphasize the fact that Q for quick mask is the very, 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 very best way to get a more accurate selection. Command zero fits in window. Command zero fits in window. So now if I Q for quick mask, what I can do, I have a couple of choices. I could go to the select menu and save selection. And I don't want to save a new selection. I want to update my existing selection. Okay, so I want to update my existing selection. And I can hit OK. Okay, so I can go to select, save selection. I actually picked the wrong one. I meant to pick this one full body because that's what this is over here to the right. So I'm going to replace the channel or add to the channel. We're just going to physically replace the channel. Make a change, save a change. Okay, so quick mask mode is the absolute best way. So what I'm sharing with you is you can use whatever tool gets you close to where you need to go, whether that's the wand tool or the lasso tool or even the pen tool or the magnetic tool. We'll explore all those tools in a subsequent video, but I want to get you up and running up the speed with Photoshop in a very quick, easy way. Okay, so in our next video, we're going to put her in a separate layer. Actually, we'll keep her in this layer because she's inside the layer, but we'll do some cool stuff in the next video.